couple of ideas. It's brainstorming as a team and actually having like this team atmosphere when they agree <coughs> and stuff. Like, I'm sure all of you have been in a uh, uh, point in your uh, coaching career, I guess I'm trying to say, when the kids just aren't agreeing on anything and you have no idea what to do. The biggest thing that you can do to kind of help combat that is to create a sense of team. Um, and a great site for that is teampedia.net. Um, team and then pedia, like encyclopedia.net. It has a ton of brainstorming games. Uh, you can categorize it by materials, by grades, all that sort of stuff. And it's just really nice for the kids to feel like they're not competing with one another to get their ideas heard. They're actually all having their ideas heard together. Um, another great idea is if your team is not necessarily behaving well, it's just have them do something that's not OM related. You know, if they're elementary, have them go play on the playground. They're high school, you know, have them go out to lunch together. Just so that they can kind of realize that they're human beings. You know, like they can be friends. I think sometimes when you throw them on a team, they're like, I don't, I don't know this, these people and I don't really want to. Um, and so you kind of have to make sure that they're coming together as a team. And after we brainstorm as a team, we have a couple strategies for brainstorming. I'm going to highlight three today. Um, I'm going to go through them kind of quickly because we're going to actually practice them. So if you guys get a little bit confused, don't worry, go to practice and it's going to make more sense. Everybody cool with me so far? Okay. So the first strategy is group think. And this is one that most people turn to automatically. And that's just when the whole team collectively uh, decides things as a group. This is really great if you have big picture things in your long term. For example, the setting. You don't want one person creating that. You want kind of everybody thinking about it and creating it as a team. Um, when you have these big picture ideas, you want everybody involved so that the other people don't feel like they're being left down. That's no longer their team. It's no longer their problem. The next one is jigsaw, and we've actually already been doing jigsaw during class today. And that's when you divide into smaller groups and then share their ideas with the whole group. So everybody, or every single group is a puzzle piece, so you're a puzzle piece, you're a puzzle piece, you're a puzzle piece. And then when we did that little practice spontaneous, you guys thought of your ideas, you guys thought of your ideas, and then together as a group, we all shared them, and that's jigsaw. And that's really great if you guys have cliques on your team. Um, I always kind of state the one where it's like the boys against the girls, because it's always boys against girls. It doesn't matter what age group it is. It's always boys against girls. And so if you notice that the boys never want the girls' ideas and the girls never want the boys' idea, you can go ahead and have a jigsaw of half boys, half girls, half boys, half girls, so it kind of forces them to work together. And that's not outside assistance. You can suggest like, hey, don't you two want to go work with them and you two work with them for the brainstorming. That's not outside assistance. That's just making sure that the team is um, being heard. And the last one is sticky notes. Sticky notes is a bit abstract, but it makes sense once it's in practice. So basically what you do is you have um, part of something that, or a problem that has lots of different chunks to it, lots of different topics. And what you do is you divide each topic and you assign a different color sticky note or a different color marker. And what you do is you give each child each color of the sticky note and you give them some time to just write down an idea on that sticky note. This is really good if you have really quiet kids that don't really want to talk because they, first of all, they have time to think. Because some kids do need that time to think. You can't just say, well, what's your idea? They don't have one off the top of their head. They need to sit there and think about it. And then what you do is you display all of them. So that way, if they don't really want to talk, if they're a little shy, all their ideas are being displayed and heard. And then you can kind of mix the max and compromise. Does it kind of make sense just as an overview? We're going to practice some them. Cool? All right. So today, you'll be solving a long-term problem. I hope all of you brought your thinking caps. So your problem today is? If I can get it up there. Yeah. So you will be creating an original skit. Don't worry, you don't have to act. An original skit with the following elements. One, an exotic setting your characters travel to. Two, a trio of characters, of three characters, who seem very different but have one thing in common. And three, a machine that transports them to their setting but is broken by a freak accident and is fixed. So, oh my goodness gracious, I just unloaded a whole bunch on you. And that's how it normally feels when you read the long term, too, right? Because you have this, and you have this, and you have this. And by the way, you have style, and all this, and all this. We're going to go ahead and break it up into little chunks. So first of all, I want you to do, just in your little thinking groups, using group think, I want you to decide the exotic setting. Okay, the exotic setting that you want to go to. I'm going to give you about two minutes to think, and then we're going to share from each group. So just think of your group, do the group think, what is going to be your exotic setting? Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 the exotic setting doesn't have to be a real place or a place that you can actually go to. Okay. Could it be like no matter? 
Cool for group thing? Alright, now we're going to do jigsaw. So what I want you to do is I want you to break up into at least two groups. So do either two or two, two or three, you know, break up into two different groups. And you're going to think about three characters. So it's three characters that seem very different but have one thing in common. And you're going to go ahead and jigsaw. So you're going to break off into your little groups for two, three minutes, and then we're going to bring together each thinking group, and you're going to decide. Does that make sense? Does everybody get the first step of jigsaw? All right, go ahead and start thinking. Three characters that have one common thing. Yeah. 
one or two more minutes. Right when he doesn't have a brain. Very cool. What about this one? Oh. Um, we had a whale, a mermaid, and a scuba diver, and they all have a superpower. Oh, very cool. And I think, um, yeah, they're all different superpowers, but it's cool that they all have one superpower. I'm going to let you guys go last. Is that cool? Well, our characteristic is hopping, so we thought we'd okay. get free, so we have a World Guinness champion hopper, and we have a, a, um, a hopping slug that gets its oxygen from hopping, and okay. then we have a alien who hops around. Who hops around that's so that's another kind of like really physical thing that they're going yeah. to see. All right, what about this last one? <laughs> <laughs> I went, we obviously had the mom, dad, and kid, yeah. but okay. the dad would be like Joker in a suit of cards, and the mom would be the queen of diamonds, and the child would be the ace of spades. Okay, so they're all going to be cards. Very cool. Okay, does everybody kind of understand Jigsaw? Um, like I said, this is really good for clicks, and this is also just really good when you want kind of a lot of ideas. Um, kids normally feel a little bit more comfortable talking in a smaller group, and then you can all share it as a whole. Cool? All right, we're going to do my favorite one, which is sticky notes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand out sticky notes, and everybody needs hello. I was told that you were talking about me, and that you said very bad things about me. <laughs> um, so we're going to go ahead and do sticky notes. And so on your blue one, I want you to write a machine that you think that would be cool. Pink one, an accident. And the yellow is the fixing tool that fixes it. Now, while you're writing them, I don't want you to talk to your team. I want this to be an individual thing that you talk about, and then we'll bring them together. Does that make sense? Okay. I'm going to come around with the sticky notes. Does anybody need a pencil? Pencil. Okay. Then I'm going to come around with the sticky notes. So they're in groups, so just go ahead and hand them down. I might have to give some extra value. I think I did them in groups of four, so I might have to come around with a five. And I'm bringing your pencil, don't worry. Do we need one more? I need one of these. I'm coming, I'm coming. 
Don't worry. I was saying earlier because some kids actually just need a minute to think um, and they just kind of need a way to do their ideas out there. If you have a primary team and some of them cannot write yet, bless their hearts, um, you could team them up with an older member that could write or you can have them draw a picture. A quick question for you. Yeah. So when you're doing this with your group, do you just have them write one idea per sticky note? So that yeah. way you can just blame all Exactly. Okay. Just one idea per sticky note. Um, sometimes I just give you guys one for time reasons, but you could give them two, three sticky notes, however many ideas that they have. Got <coughs> one minute more for thinking time, and then we're going to put it all together. <laughs> Which one do you want to go with? That's actually why. 
And then what was excellent? Our accident was the girls got into like a screaming match and cracked the glass. Oh. Okay, but these are all divas, so they're oh. <laughs> divas. <laughs> divas. <laughs> they all have no problem. <laughs> all right, so then um, we're, we didn't kind of get to the how he got there, but there's a handsome android <laughs> that uses his magic. Oh, that sounds cool. <laughs> <laughs> that uses his magic wrench. <laughs>